Police tonight. He's admitted to killing 17 people and then stopping at a fast food joint. Authorities are now investigating the checkered past of the Florida school shooter. We're learning now 19 year old Nicholas Cruz bought his AR 15 rifle legally after passing a background check. Right now, he's on suicide watch after confessing to the atrocity that followed. Kenneth Craig begins our team coverage tonight from Stoneman Douglas High School with a look at how the deadly rampage unfolded. Kenneth? Veronica, good evening to you from Parkland, Florida, where, as you can see tonight, deputies still have this school blocked off this evening. It's just down the street from a park inside a neighborhood where hundreds of people turned out tonight for a candlelight vigil. Therefore, Mr. Cruz, you're going to be held without bond. 19 year old Nicholas Cruz is behind bars, facing 17 counts of premeditated murder. Cruz's attorneys say he is a deeply troubled young man who fell through the cracks. He is fully aware of what is going on. And he's just a broken human being. Police say Cruz bought his semi-automatic rifle at Sunrise Tactical Supply in Coral Springs last February. Cruz took an Uber to the scene of the crime Wednesday and started shooting around 2.21 in the afternoon. I was hiding in an open room that the shooter could have easily walked into and killed me. Police say Cruz told them after the rampage, he ditched his gun and ammunition in a plan to save himself. The suspect crossed fields and ran west and tried to mix in with the group that were running away, fearing for their lives. An officer from a neighboring police department spotted Cruz in a residential area and arrested him. For a quick moment, I thought, could this be the person? Is this who I need to stop? Authorities have interviewed more than 2,000 people so far in this investigation. The school is still a crime scene. Meadow Pollock. A massive crowd gathered at an evening vigil trying to find comfort together, their candles lighting the way. It was one of several vigils Thursday where some students remarked that this tragedy was preventable. It's an American problem that school shootings are happening. A problem that's now rocked another American community reeling with grief. And we got a list of the victims this evening. They ranged from just 14 to 49 years old. And Kenneth Craig reporting in Parkland, Florida on the night beat. Veronica, back to you. All right, Kenneth, we appreciate that. And like he was just saying, we are learning more about those victims tonight and their unique stories. Night beats Elizabeth, Elizabeth Cook now gives us a look at those lives that were lost. Liz? Monica, we now know the names of the 17 people killed in this horrific shooting. We're also learning about acts of heroism. Aaron Feiss was the assistant football coach at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. He was fatally shot while shielding students. The Broward County Sheriff called him a phenomenal man. The kids in this community loved him. They adored him. He was one of the greatest people I knew. Jamie Guttenberg was a student. Her brother reportedly also attended school here. He survived. On Facebook, her father, Fred Guttenberg, wrote, My heart is broken. Yesterday, Jennifer Bloom Guttenberg and I lost our baby girl to a violent shooting at her school. We are praying for these families. We will continue to pray for these families and that justice is done for the one that brutally, brutally murdered all of these students. I hear ba, ba, ba. Nicole Suarez, a freshman, escaped the shooting rampage, but she says the carnage will be seared in her mind for the rest of her life. I get into the hallway, I see bodies, which I don't know if they were alive or dead, but they seemed pretty like stone cold to me. Senior Nick Dwart was a swimmer who had signed a letter of intent to attend the University of Indianapolis. His friends wrote on Facebook before his death, we can't wait to see what you can achieve. Aliana Petty helped victims of Hurricane Irma. Her family says she brought peace and joy to those that had lost everything. They're just a few of the 14 teens and three adults whose lives were suddenly ended. All of them just experiencing a regular day of school until the suspect opened fire. This is the deadliest school shooting in the United States in the last five years. Veronica? It is just so sad. All right, Liz, thank you. President Trump says that he plans to visit Parkland, Florida soon. Earlier today, he addressed the nation, urging kids who feel isolated or alone to reach out to someone. If you need help, turn to a teacher, a family member, a local police officer, or a faith leader. Answer hate with love. Answer cruelty with kindness.
The president vowed to take action to make schools safer places, but he made no specific mention of gun control. Now, as of January 2017, California gun owners are required to register assault weapons like AR 15s. Manufacturers responded to the new law with a workaround, including slight revisions to the AR 15 that make the gun legal. Tonight, Senator Dianne Feinstein says it's time to do something once and for all. Let's try to do those things that can keep these powerful weapons out of the hands of people who shouldn't have them. And this young man is a classic case. One woman who lost her daughter in the deadly rampage made her own plea directly to President Trump. A crazy person just walks right into the school, knocks down the window of my child's door, and starts shooting, shooting her and killing her. President Trump, you say, what can you do? You can stop the guns from getting into these children's hands.